Hello everyone and welcome to this video on recurrence relation. So in this video we want to solve the following recurrence relation and we have that recurrence relation in the orange rectangle and it states that t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus 8 and then the base case states that t of 1 is equal to 8 which basically means that when our input n is equal to 1 then our function t equals 8. Alright so to get started the first thing that I'm going to do is create two columns one column is going to be called k and this column k will hold the number of iterations that we go through as we are trying to solve this recurrence relation alright and then the second column that I'm going to create will be called t of n and this column will contain the function t at each iteration okay so for iteration number one, our k value will be 1. So we're going to put a 1 in that column. And then our function, t of n, will just be the current function. So we're just going to rewrite the recurrence from above, or the function from above. All right, so that's going to be t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus 8. Alright, so now for us to go to the next step, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to I keep it in black for now. So for us to go to the next step, we need to know what t of n minus 1 is. So let's solve that, and that's easy enough to solve. All we have to do is plug in n minus 1 into our original function, t, for n. Alright? So let me show you and demonstrate what I mean. So t of n minus 1 is equal to t of n minus 1 minus 1. Okay, so all I did was plug in n minus 1 for n in our original function. Okay, and then I need to add plus 8. Okay, so let's simplify this. This just equals t of n minus 2 plus 8. Okay, so now we can go to our second iteration, or iteration number 2, and we can rewrite our function t. So t of n is now going to be equal to what we just now solved, right there. So that's t of n minus 2 plus 8. And then we have to add in the plus 8 from right there. Okay. So let me simplify this. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this in red just to kind of make it a little bit more or in blue to make it a little bit more obvious so we have t of n minus 2 plus 8 and then plus that extra 8 okay so what is this equal to this is equal to t of n minus 2 plus 2 times 8 Okay, so for us to go to the next iteration, we need to know what t of n minus 2 is. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing like we did ab above, but this time we're going to substitute in n minus 2 in our original equation for n instead of the n minus 1 like we did previously. All right, so t of n minus 2 is equal to t of n minus 2 minus 1 plus 8. And if we simplify that, we get t of n minus 3 plus 8. Okay, so now for iteration number 3, our function t of n is equal to t of n minus 3 plus 8, and then I'm going to add 2 times 8, 
right? Because I got that from right there. And of course, this whole equation there is equivalent to the t of n minus 2. All right, so let's simplify this. This is equal to t of n minus 3 plus 3 times 8. All right, and we're going to continue to do this until we see a pattern. And luckily, I think I already see a pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these, uh, these functions for each iteration step. I'm going to rewrite them in red so it's a little bit more obvious to both you and I. All right, so for iteration number one, I'm going to rewrite this as t of n minus 1 plus 1 times 8. Okay? Then for iteration number 2, this is, this will remain the same actually, t of n minus 2 plus 2 times 8. Okay? And then iteration number 3, we get t of n minus 3 plus 3 times 8. Okay? And now maybe you can see the pattern as well. All right, so now that I see this pattern, I can come up with a general form for our function t. So I'm going to put a few dots here and say for some iteration k, our function t of n is equal to t of n minus k plus k times 8. All right. Okay. So now that we have this nice general form of our function, we need to know when it stops. And that can be found in our base case, right? So we know that when the input is 1, our function t equals a constant value. In this case, that constant value is 8. So what that means is, that means that we want our input n minus k to be equal to 1 in order for the function to stop. Also, we want to get this function in terms of n, and this will help us to do that as well. So, n minus k, we want it to be equal to 1. That would mean that n is equal to k plus 1, and that means that k is equal to n minus 1. So anywhere we see the variable k, we can plug in or substitute it out for um, n minus 1. So we can either plug, you know, plug in n minus 1 or substitute out k for n minus 1. Uh, same thing. I'm pretty sure I'm saying the same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to create a, a little area for us. Uh, to do this. So let's just kind of put a little area like that for us. Okay? All right. So we get t of, and let's put a little equal sign, t of n minus, and we're going to plug in n minus 1 for k. So that's n minus 1 plus n minus 1 times 8. All right, and this is equal to t of n minus n plus 1 plus 8n minus 8. All right, and then this is equal to t of 1 
plus 8n minus 8. And then, of course, we know that t of 1 is equal to 8. That's from our base case above in the orange rectangle. So t of 1 is equal to 8. And then we have to add plus 8n minus 8. And then this is just equal to 8n. All right. Okay. So what does this mean in terms of big O notation? So this function, t of n, is big O of n. And I know this because the fastest growing part of the function is n. Okay. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. And thank you all for watching. And I will see you all in the next video. See ya.